Alrighty, y'all, I have a slightly different type of video for y'all today. I bought this blank from Maker Material Supply. Now, this is a G3 bayonet blade made by Aircorn. It's a German company. I think it's actually old German military stock, just unfinished bayonets. And I saw this on their website for like 10 bucks when I was buying some other steel and supplies. And I figured, heck, it'd be kind of a fun project to finish it out as a knife. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it a true bayonet. It's definitely not going to be to spec, and it's not going to be a direct replica, but I think we can make it look pretty cool. All right, so let's zoom in here and see what we have. The plunges actually don't look that bad on this one. It's obviously a factory piece, so they're not going to be uh, extremely symmetrical like they would be on a custom handmade knife. You can really see that in the clip. These plunges are definitely off, or the grinds up here are definitely off. It's interesting that these come with a, a blunted tip, and I guess that's for manufacturing safety or potentially shipping safety. I'm not sure, but we're gonna grind that tip into a real tip. I don't plan on doing much grinding on this piece just because I feel like that's not the spirit of this project. This is really finishing out uh, or restoring an old, uh, maybe piece of history or old uh, blank from, from military surplus. So. I don't want to make a whole new knife, I just want to clean this one up. So I'm going to do a significant amount of cleaning on the flats here. The shoulders are definitely not square, you can even see it here. Uh, the shoulders are way off, so I'm, I'm going to fix that for sure so I get a good guard fit. And then the tang is pretty blocky, I'm not exactly sure what kind of construction I'm going to go with here. I'm just going to wing it. I may thread the tang, I may not, so let's, uh, let's get started. All right, well, I lied a little bit. I went ahead and lightly ground some around the tip here, just because it was so off uh, from the original grinding. And you gotta think, you know, these were, these were likely being produced uh, maybe even during wartime, so people were just running them through the machine, and uh, if you can put an edge on it and cut with it, it was good enough. And uh, I, like I said, I didn't get it perfect, uh, but I definitely, kind of brought the tip back a little closer to the center. Uh, the clip area is still the worst and I'm really not gonna dive into trying to make this perfect, uh, but I just wanted to say that yes, I did grind it a little bit. So uh, we're gonna get on the hand sanding now and get out the rest of this rust. Alrighty, so I got out my micrometer, calipers, and a calculator so I can figure out how big of a slot I want to mill in my guard. 
I start off by measuring the height of the tang here, which came out to around 0.67 inches. Now there's a little bit of slack there because I will be able to file the top and bottom of the slot. So I made sure to come up the radius a little bit to make this measurement, just to give me a little wiggle room when I am fitting the guard. On the width of the guard slot, I measured the ricasso at the top and bottom with these micrometers and got 0.1778 inches at the smallest of the two measurements. I then took 10 thousandths of an inch off of that in order to give myself a little bit of uh, material to remove and or hammer on so I have a perfect fit around this ricasso. It's obviously not perfectly parallel because my measurements weren't exactly the same. They were off by less than a thousandth of an inch, but there is a little bit of a difference between the top and bottom of that ricasso. So I wanna give myself some material to shape the guard over that ricasso. So by taking 10 thousandths of an inch off of it, I get 0.1678. I'm gonna be using an eighth of an inch cutter, so I can take this 0.1678, subtract out an eighth of an inch, and that gives me around 42.8 thousandths left. I divide that by two, and I take off an additional 21 and a half thousandths per side of my slot, and that should give me a guard that is milled with a slot that is 10 thousandths of an inch under my 0.1778 measurement. So, a little bit of math that goes into doing this, but by doing this, it really uh, reduces the amount of time that you'll spend fiddling around with your guard. So now I'm gonna get over to the mill and put in the slot. Another side note here, I'm actually gonna put the face of my guard down so that after I mill in my slot to the appropriate dimensions, I can take a bigger end mill and cut in a wider slot on the back of the guard and this will just ensure that I have less material to actually fit when I'm fitting the guard onto the tank. All right, so as y'all saw, I got the slot, eighth of an inch slot all the way through the guard, and I just started the process of widening this slot to my target dimension. You can see right now, I've made it four thousandths of an inch on the y-axis, four and a half thousandths. I also went four and a half thousandths on the other side. So a tip that I got from Carl Anderson is to work both sides of the guard, uh, one after the other, and ease up on your target. So in my case, uh, if I remember right, my target was somewhere around 22 thousandths on each side. So I will slowly work up to that by taking off one or two thousandths on the top, one or two thousandths on the bottom, moving back and forth on my Y axis, and then making a full pass on the X axis. So that's kind of the process here. I'm just going to keep doing that until I hit my target dimension. Thank you. 
All right, before we start talking about this guy, I'm just gonna spray it down with some oil here. I like to do this at the end on all my high carbon or carbon steel knives just so they don't rust. I also like getting it on the wood. It does a pretty good job at conditioning, I guess, or I don't know, oiling up the wood. Looks good. I feel like it protects it a little bit uh, from the elements or from storage. Just about everything in my safe ends up getting cleaned and oiled with Ballastol. I really like this stuff. So anyway, this is how our bayonet turned out. I think it looks pretty good. You know, I, I didn't go too far on the blade with modifications because I wanted this to be kind of a, uh, a jumping off point for anyone who's looking to restore their own bayonet. Uh, they can get one from Maker Material Supply, just like I did, and uh, they can restore it. And it was a fun project. Now, I could have gone a little further here. I could have uh, sanded out some of these deeper pits could have put some fancy finish on the blade, like a stone wash or a mustard patina. Uh, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it was. It looks like a little bit more authentic, I guess. And like it was actually used or something. One other thing I'll mention is that on the edge, the secondary bevel, you can see that the tip area was significantly thicker from the manufacturer. And that, that makes sense because if you're gonna be stabbing with this, you'd want the, the tip to be as robust as possible uh, because you can put a lot of force behind it, especially if this is mounted so when sharpening the bayonet, which some people say you don't need to sharpen, but I decided to sharpen this one. When sharpening it, you can see the secondary bevel got really tall there. So it's not the same height all the way down the blade. Uh, that may bother some people aesthetically, but I did want to have an edge on this bayonet. Now, also on the plunge area, you can see when using a Tormek style sharpener, it can be hard to uh, get the plunge area right, especially if your plunge is sweeping like this. And that's why I like having a sharpening choil in the knife uh, or a Spanish notch. That helps out greatly with, with that issue right there. Uh, so anyway, the uh, hole came out good. That was easy to do with the hole saw. The guard fit is pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's, it's pretty darn good. There's no caps uh, when that's, that's always a plus. And uh, what else can I say about this guy? Oh, the pommel, I probably would have, if I redid the pommel, I'd probably put an angle on it. Uh, instead of having this 90 degree, but uh, maybe in the next project. Also, I wanna note that this is not to scale. If you try mounting this, it will not mount on uh, what it was originally intended to mount on. And uh, it's more so just for looks. So I didn't have the dimensions of a real G3 bayonet. So uh, if anyone does have those, make sure to uh, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to put that in the top comment. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put this on eBay for like five or 10 bucks as an auction. And if anyone wants it, uh, you can go grab it there because I really don't have much of a use for it. And uh, I have plenty of knives. So I figure somebody out there may wanna use this as a camp knife or something. So if y'all enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.